The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 22nd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send that one to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A terrific Thursday, of course. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. I get all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The leader is the uh, semis. They're off about you know, two and seven tenths percent, 68 points. The Dow's off 90. That's a quarter of a percent. The S&P is down three quarters of a percent, or 29 points. One and a quarter percent for the NASDAQ 100. That's 139 points to the downside. Gold is up five bucks. Silver's up six pennies. Lights recruit back a buck 28, trading out at 84.45. Natural gas up 24 cents. She's trading out at 7.53. 30 year treasury down two ticks. 130.07 is the print there. Now, lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got Eli Lilly up about 11 bucks, nearly 4%. Uh, Humana is up uh, 6 percent, a little over 1 percent. Huntington Ingalls Industry is up 1 and 6 tenths percent or 4 buckaroonies. Cassava Sciences, SAVA, that's a fan favorite here at TFNN. That's up 10 percent, $3.70. To the downside, you got Booking Holdings up 59 bucks, a little over 3 percent. Chipotle down 61, a little over 3 percent there. Mercado Libre about 4.5 percent or 40 bucks. Faxet Research down 35 or 8 percent. Monolithic Power Systems down 21, 5 percent. So we got some movers. But we definitely have some shakers. So where do we want to begin? I'll tell you where we've been. We'll begin by taking a look at what's going on right now, and that is the Dow Diamonds are testing their swing point low from June. This is the daily swing point. That takes us back to the trading session of June the 17th. You're looking at the very bottom panel out there. Now, on that trading session, volume was 4.7 million shares. We've been trading for about an hour and a half, and this has done 1 million shares out there. So it looks like... The Dow Diamonds are pulling back into this swing point with light volume. Nonetheless, a close below 301.58, even if it's on light volume, opens the door for a test of the swing point low. And that's at 296.39. What happens if we get a close back above 301.58 and we do it with less than 4.7 million shares? Then the Dow Diamonds will have tested and rejected that swing point with lighter volume. The expression there is if you can't bust them down, you try to bust them the upside. However, you and I have, we know where buyers and sellers reside because we use those TAS market profiles. The buyers were at 310, 306.15, but they got slaughtered yesterday. Price is below that. That is where any counter trend move would find resistance at about the 306.15 level. That's only if we get a rejection of that swing point. The other index ETFs, the SPIs, the Qs, the IWM, have not made it all the way down there. Those are noted with those uh, yellow horizontal lines. For example, in the SPY, it's at the 369.38 at the top, 362.17. Today's volume is about 31 million shares. The volume on that swing point is 134 million shares. So there, too, it appears 
it appears that we're coming into that swing point with light volume. But we're not down there just yet, so we really can't say. It's 81 million shares on the Q's net level. The first level will be 276. Uh, 06. And on the IWM, that first level is at 168.42. The volume there is 43 million shares. So we may learn something from the Dow Diamonds out here today. Again, a close under 301.58 with volume says we go tag to 296.39, perhaps take it out. Close below 301.58 on light volume mm, can go either way out there, but so close inside the swing point opens up the door to go take a move there. Now let's go switch over and take a look at what's going on in the equity futures charts out here. So we'll begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. And here on the ES Mini, the upper left-hand corner is the daily time frame. You'll see that today is going to become bar number 8 of a TD9 count. Bar number 9, to complete tomorrow, needs to close below 39.2275. Seems like a likely outcome. So a TD9 count bottom should form for the ES Mini between today and Monday. That then should take price up to its uh, oscillator and change line. That's currently at 39.10. Now, there are a few bottoming patterns out here. You've got the five-hour chart has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That pattern gets negated if there's a close below 37.66.75. That would then negate that signal. Now, the five-hour bar, this one closes at 2. The next one will close at the uh, session close. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, the two has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The current bar here closes at noon. Again, the same level that you're watching at the low. If that gets taken out, those patterns get negated. Those are the only bottom signals at the moment. 15 minute looks like it's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom. It'll do that at 11:15. That pattern will it will form at 11:15. So you have a TD9 count bottom. That pattern will complete at 11:30. That should then take price up to 38.72 or 3786 or thereabout. That's the signal coming from the 15 minute time frame chart for the ES mini. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow. Let's go take, since the Dow is testing that swing point low from uh, June, let's go take a look at the Dow equity future contract. We'll come back, we'll take a look at the NQ out here. But first let's get a feel for the uh, intraday signals. By, by the way, the Dow also is going to form bar number eight today. In order for a TD nine count bottom to uh, confirm tomorrow, Price must close below 31.117. That sure seems like a likely outcome. That suggests a TD9 count bottom should form between today and Monday. What does that mean? That means we should see a counter trend move up to its oscillator and change line. Uh, there's also this is a bullish structure daily profile that price closed below. So it's really the center of that profile and the oscillator and change line in the 31.030 ish area out there that you should expect a bounce. Now, Five-hour chart here also has a Rhodes momentum indicator that makes the low overnight um, uh, at uh, 30.048 the key level to watch. A close below that says we head lower out there. What other signals? You've got a TD9 count bottom on a 10-minute chart out here, and that's simply led to a test and rejection of that oscillator and change line. So here's really kind of the, the way that it works. So when you get valid bottoming patterns out here, that's a, another cool element about the oscillator and change line, which I teach you. If you don't know if that uh, sounds foreign language, just sign up for Mastering Probability. You do it for 29 days, costs you nothing, and you will learn a ton out here. That's all I see. Where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, no requests so far either by email or inside the Tiger's Den. Let's go take a look at the NQ charts out here. You'll see the NQ also forming bar number eight today. In order for bar number nine to complete tomorrow, you need to see a close below 1204550. Seems like like likely outcome. That suggests that we should see a TD9 count bottom complete by Monday. And again, that should take price up to its oscillator and change line right around the 1208 area. The five hour chart right now, and again, this bought a candle doesn't close until 2 p.m. The low is being taken uh, is, uh, well, we have price trading below the overnight low. It really came in around midnight or 11 o'clock last night. And that's out at the 11550 area. We're trading right now at 11531. So looks like uh, what price is trying to do is negate that uh, signal out here. And if we take a look at a 30-minute chart, we can see that a TD9 count bottom formed right at 1030. It was negated immediately. It tells you about a strong momentum move to the uh, downside out there. 15-minute chart right now in the bar following bar number nine. You can watch the low of the session. That low gets taken out, meaning to close below it on a 15-minute basis. That suggests lower price. All these charts here are suggesting lower price when we take a look at the uh, NQ. The last one to look at would be the Russell 2000. Let's go explore that. Let's take a look at its equity future contract, see what kind of signals, if anything, are being generated for you and I. So give us a moment here to get this to populate. Now, in the case of Russell 2000, today is only bar number seven. So it puts off the... Uh, uh, the TD9 count uh, signal, uh, we'll take a look at that, you know, maybe tomorrow, maybe on uh, Monday is more likely the time to look at that. As we look at its other uh, charts out here, the five-hour chart is in the process of negating the road's momentum indicator bottom. You are in wave number seven, that's letter G, on a four-hour chart. That would need that's uh, that would need a higher low. This got candle closes at uh, 2, I believe. Uh, yeah, 2 p.m. Uh, so you could get a wave seven bottom. The 120 minute chart looks ugly, as does the 60 minute chart, as does the 30 minute chart. TD9 count on the 15 minute uh, does uh, will complete a TD9 count bottom uh, at 1130 out there. That could lead to a or should lead to a bounce up to 1741 or thereabout. 
just a, a quick little relief rally there. But otherwise, everything looks pretty horrible here for the Russell 2000. So where is it that prices are headed uh, in the uh, in the four equity future contracts? Well, let's go change screens out here. We've got those A to B equals CD patterns that are typed in. I don't believe we took a look at that yet. If we did, my apology. But here's the A to B equals CD for the ES Mini. That we touched upon. 37.29 is one to one. 36.081 is 1.272. We take a look at the NQ. The one to one level is at the 11.161. 10.664 is the one to one point two seven two. The Dow, the one to one is at 29.537. 28.652 is more likely the outcome. Only a 50% retracement. Everything is on the left side of the C to D leg. That tells you the move is stronger along the C to D leg than it is along the A to B leg. And in the Russell 2000. The one to one would get us down to 16.83. The 1.272 would get us to 16.14. If we take a look at the horizontal and diagonal trading ranges out here, we can see that the rising price channel uh, was formed off of the lows in 2020. Price is now below that. This is a weekly chart, unless there's some substantial rally uh, between uh, by the end of tomorrow. But this is signaling to you and I is price should go tag the bottom of its descending price channel, as well as its next horizontal trading range. And that's going to be in the 28,908 level. Now, this is the Dow uh, that chart that we're looking at. So just remember around 28,900. As we take a look at the U.S. indices out here, 29,271 is the one to one A to B equals CD, but 28,391 is the one to 1.272. So we go back and we take a look at the... Um, the uh, uh, horizontal trading range at 28,909. That most certainly seems to be the likely outcome as to where price is headed to. We've got a caller on the line. It is uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hey, Steve. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Uh, you're calling about the 30-year treasury, I believe? Yes, I am. And tell me what you're doing and how I can best help you. Um, I'm sort of seeing a on a daily chart of th uh, an ABC down. I'm, I'm, I just bought the D point at around 128 flat. I was wondering what you see as far well, just basically what you see as far as resistance, support, and resistance level. Okay, so um, uh, we'll glad to help you out. Thanks so much. So we take a look at the uh, we take a look. I'm gonna pull up the daily time frame chart for you, and so we've been pretty much in a straight decline. So on your A to B equals CD pattern, I know what you use for your A point. I'm just curious, what did you use for your B point? Do you know? I, mean, I don't know if you're in front of your charts or not. Oh, boy. <laughs> no problem. Don't, okay. I don't have, don't have my no homework in front of me. Sorry. Sure. Because this one, that's okay. So this one is a little bit more complicated because it's just pretty much been in a uh, straight uh, downward move out here. So when I take the, the what I would use for the uh, A to B points, the A point's pretty easy. It's going to be the high from August 2nd. Then what I would use is I would use for my B point, I would use the low from August 25th. And it was just really a two-day retracement. That was in the high of August 26th. And that gets us very close to your one-to-one -one price projection. The one-to-one -one price projection would take us down to the 127.75 uh, level out there. But if this was the A to B equals CD pattern that you were using, the one that I've drawn in here, it's less than a 0.382 retracement. So this really tells us that this is a super strong move to the downside, and odds would favor that this would do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Before I move on to any other charts, any questions about that so far? Oh, no. Looks great okay. so far. So that what I'm going to do here, because we just rolled over to the December contract, as you know, and what I want to do is I have a set of charts here that uses my synthetic version of the uh, contract so that we can get some profile levels. So I'm going to turn over and we're going to take a look at uh, that. And here we've got daily, weekly, monthly uh, time frames out there. And so you'll see the larger a to B equals CD patterns. I actually need to redraw that in here. I see that it shifted just a tad. I'll do this on the monthly time frame. The A point out here takes us back to March of 2020. The B point is March of 2021. And the C point, the high looks like it was, see, 12, 1, that was 164.22, 160. Yeah, so it's going to be the high 
from uh, December of 2021. So it is already on the larger basis out here. Um, this has already achieved the one-to-one -one level. It's below that area, and it's really suggesting to you and I that this wants to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. And its next price projection, I use the 1.272 expansion of the uh, C of the A to B leg. That would get us down to about 120.21 out there. We're below profiles on the monthly. We're below profiles on the quarterly. We're below profiles on the daily. We're below profiles on the weekly. This is telling us that the 30-year Treasury is likely to head lower. Before I shift yeah. to some of the intraday charts, Charts, any questions because this set of charts here kind of says taking a long position is maybe a little bit suspect but we're going to go take a look at the shorter term time frame charts but first I want to make sure you've got this bigger picture out there now so any questions about this this set of yeah, charts and those those I, profiles? I, I, I'm essentially just doing a short-term trade on this this Perfect. could be nope. just uh, something day for today or to end by tomorrow morning so okay just, okay just, so I'm just looking for a slight rebound sure so let's do this, Ben. We're about to go to a hard break out here. Uh, if you're watching Inside Tiger TV, you'll be able to see the intraday charts. And we'll come back and look for those signals for you that you need to see in order for an intraday trade to work out or not. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be back with Ben in San Jose in just a few minutes. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the 30-year Treasury here. This is for Ben in San Jose. We're looking for a short-term trade out here, trying to assist him where a bounce could take us to. So there are really three charts out here, Ben, that I'm focused on right now from the intraday standpoint. And that's the 10-minute, the 15-minute, and the 30-minute time frame chart. All three of these charts have bottoming signals for you. The 30-minute chart has a TD9 count bottom. 
It's on a 30-minute bar, and it was the bar that completed at 11 o'clock this morning. That low is a real key low for you. If there were to be a close below 128.03, that's the low of that session, that would then signal to you and I that uh, being on the long side of the trade is not the place to be. So that's the first level. Because we've got a confirmed TD9 count low, what price should do is bounce up towards its oscillator and change on the daily time frame. And we'll call that somewhere in the 129 area. But we want to manage this thing on even shorter term time frames for you based upon the larger picture that you and I looked at for the daily and some of those larger time frames. And even when we take a look at the five hour, four hour, two hour, one hour chart here, they all suggest that uh, price could or should head lower. But the bounce out here that you're anticipating, first I'll go to the 15 minute time frame chart. The first level of resistance on the move higher is going to be at about 128.22. I'm trying to use that approximation because it's really the oscillator and change line. But as price moves higher, that should also move higher. And there is a bearish structured 15 minute profile. So the sellers, we don't know whether the buyers will be able to overtake the sellers, but the sell zone out here where you've got sellers is between 128.22 and 128.31. If price can overtake 128.31, then you'll get up to the 129 area. Those would be the parameters that I would be using here at this stage. Does that make sense? I don't know if you can see the charts, whether in Tiger TV or inside our Tiger's Den out there. Um, does that make sense? You know, you entered the trade for a certain reason. Where were your targets? Maybe I can try to assist you that way also. Uh, it was similar to what you just said. I, I entered around 128.01. Okay. And um, I'm looking extreme for daily targets just 129. But I'd be, happy with, uh, <laughs> I'd be happy with 128.30. So look, this, the, the cool thing here is I think you're in a free trade right now. So if it's me, based on everything that we took a look at, I'd move my stop to break even. Um, you know, you were going to target the 129 level. So I, I and you're looking at this as a short term trade and everything that we looked at for the 10, 15 minute and 30 minute chart. Support that idea out there, whether or not price takes off above that. You know, you entered into a trade for a certain reason. You got into it for a certain reason. And I'd be looking to uh, take that trade off uh, following your your guidelines there or at least move the stuff move the stop up you know so if you oh, get I've above already, one I, yeah i've already moved the stop in the money so there's yeah perfect whether i make a hundred dollars a thousand dollars it's still profitable so it's wonderful perfect. thank you so much steve i appreciate the help uh, my pleasure glad that we're able to uh help you with this uh, trade and have a great day that was ben in uh, san jose any other questions Oh, okay, good. I think we got them. All right. Let me just check the email, see if there was anything that came in. Yeah, there are a couple of questions that have come in. So let's get to There was one inside the Tigers then, though. So uh, give me a moment here to get back to that. That came in first. That was from McGuppy wants to take a look at NVIDIA. So absolutely. Now, I know that NVIDIA had shown um, a couple of days ago was one of the stocks that showed, I believe, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal, an RMA bottom signal. Let's go see if that held up through yesterday. The question goes like this. Could you please look at NVIDIA and the semis? Yep, we'll do that. You've got several long term, highly profitable positions out here. So right now, today, that uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that formed on September 16th is being tested. If price is able to close below, 126.17, that suggests you're on the wrong side of the trade. Now, there were 67 million shares that traded that day. So far today inside of NVIDIA, oh, you're at 35 million shares. So this is moving lower with volume. But McGuppy, if that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom holds out there, there's no reason to jettison the position. It would just suggest that we're in some type of consolidation with the low being the uh, low from September 16th-ish and the uh, resistance level or support level, I should say, and the resistance level being 135.82. Monthly or the weekly chart out here looks god-awful. Why is that? Well, uh, it had a seventh wave move bottom. Uh, that is uh, being negated. That was negated uh, last week out there. Uh, so I don't see any bottoming signal. You are in bar number eight on a TD nine count monthly uh, chart out here. You're below the breakout level of 134.59. Bar nine still has to complete out here. Uh, bar nine in order to complete has to close below. That's next month has to close below 151.59 out here. So NVIDIA on the daily time frame is testing a key level which has that road momentum indicator bottom set up by that bullish engulfing candle and it's doing it with volume. So, McGuppy, as I take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart out here, 
what we don't have is any kind of a bottom signal. doesn't mean it can't bottom. It just means that the tools that I use, it does not have that bottom signal out there. So I hope that that helps you out. You also wanted to take a look at the semi, the semis out here via the SMHs. So let's get the SMH charts up on our screen out here. I don't recall the SMHs having the bottom. NVIDIA did. Intel, as my recollection, did. But the index ETF did not. And that made taking a long trade, a new long trade, I should say, McGuffey, uh, kind of suspect out there. As we take a look at the SMHs, we do not see any kind of a bottom signal with one exception, that is wave number seven. That has been triggered today. That is letter G. Now, in order for wave, it's a very small part of the Chapman Wave toolkit out there. It's a very cool tool. <coughs> it was actually brought to us by a guy named Saratoga Bob, <coughs> who used to be a longtime dinner, and Z, or John, inside the uh, Tiger's Den. The two of them really kind of developed this tool out here with wave number seven. Now, in order for wave number seven to confirm, you have to have a higher low. So the earliest confirmation you can get on that would be tomorrow. That should then take price if that takes hold up to its oscillator and change line. Just like we took a look at with uh, Ben and take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart uh, for its TD9 count uh, bottom out there. It works the same way with any bottom signal that price will typically make its move up to that oscillator and change line. What we don't know is whether or not price can take that out. So the SMH is, if it does confirm a wave number seven bottom, should take price up towards the 203.29 area. On a weekly time frame chart, price is sitting at support or near support, the bottom of its weekly profile. On a monthly basis, <clears throat> there's really no bottom pattern out here. And the price is below its breakout level of 216. Does this mean that the semis are headed to 126.11? That's potential. Typically, you break below one support level, you go to the next support level out there. The only support that we've got right now on a monthly time frame is down at 126.11. Uh, so for the semis, uh, now there's an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here as well. So a bullish reversal candle would confirm a buy the D point pattern. On a 30-minute time frame chart out here, McGuppy, if we take a look at the uh, this, we have no bottom signal yet. Bar number seven. Uh, but it's got to you got to see lower lows in order for a TD9 count to form on the 30-minute time frame. So hope that helps you out, McGuppy, both with regard to to the SMHs and NVIDIA out there. Okay, so no more questions I see inside the Tiger's Den, or if there was one, and I overlooked it, if you'd be kind enough to retype that in, that would be great. Let's move on to the uh, two questions that have come in by email out here. The first one coming in from Nicholas A. Nicholas, oh, well, good morning, Steve. Would you mind going over the SMHs? Are they close to a TD9 count bottom? So the answer to that question specifically is no. Uh, they are going to be in bar number three of a TD9 count. Uh, thank you and have a great day. Uh, so you do have that potential wave seven bottom out there. That's the only bottom signal that I see potentially inside of the SMHs. But of course, Nicholas, you'd also be looking for the potential of a bullish reversal candle. That could confirm or would confirm a buy the D point pattern out there. So we get back to this breakout here. We got our next question. Looks like it's coming in from David H. In Tomball, Texas, he wants to take a look at fuel cell energy. F-C-E-L is a ticker symbol. Give us a call, folks, at 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paper White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All U.S. indices trading at downside as of 11.42 in the morning. We're taking a look at uh, fuel cell technology, FCEL. This is for David in Tombell, Texas. He's looking for a buy point out here. And uh, if price is not trade lower than the swing point, the low of 371, is this stock a buy? He's looking at September 8th. So September 8th, he's looking at this swing point right here. The volume on that swing point is 15 million shares. So far today, the volume is uh, 4.5 million. So 4.5 million to 4.5 times three is going to get us into the 13 or 14 million share, close to the 15 million share. So it's moving to that swing point with uh, volume. Your question is, if price tests and rejects that swing low, does it on lighter volume, is it a buy? My answer is going to be probably not. Probably not at price close below 379. Now, I say probably because this would be the first day below the bottom of its daily bullish structured profile. A second consecutive close below 379 would say, okay, that move to the downside is real. And this already has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. The swing point that was taken out with volume is the swing point for back on August 21st, uh, 23rd. There was 9.7 million shares there. When that was taken out, there was volume of 9.9. .9, there was volume of 11.7. Uh, there was volume of 8.2. Um, so this thing has a confirmed A to B equals CD down pattern. And I think your buy is more likely in the maybe the 322 level, which is the bottom of its weekly profile, and approximately where the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern would uh, complete that. So, and... Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think, David, at this stage here, we're seeing some kind of a buy signal. Now, of course, you know if we were going to see a buy signal, we'd see that first on an intraday chart out there. And a buy signal meaning it's testing, rejecting the swing point on light volume. If I just look to the 30-minute time frame chart, we do not have any kind of buy confirmed pattern. We can see prices testing that area from back on September the 8th out there. Now, the volume on a 30-minute basis, that was 1.4 million shares. As price has been pulling back into this area, we first had 950,000, then 808. The current 30-minute bar, which finishes in 15 minutes, is 329. So price is pulling back into this area with a little bit lighter volume out there. Maybe that leads to a bit of a bounce. That bounce maybe takes up to 382, 
could even get you up to 396. But do I see this as a bottoming pattern inside fuel cell technology, knowing that you have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside and potentially a close below a bull structured profile? I think the answer to that question, David, is uh, no. I don't see that in the uh, cards, not just yet. So I do hope that helps you out. Rahul and Nancy inside the Tigers don't want to take a look at Apple. Uh, so let's go pull up those charts. Nancy's specific question is, any chance of a bounce by tomorrow? And if so, where? So let's get these charts here populated. Let's get the Apple charts here populated. And for Nancy, what we're first going to do, so in the case of Apple right now, it is testing its swing point low. So here's the interesting thing. Is this is this correct? Okay, hold on a minute here. Let me uh, pull this up on my other chart. It doesn't look right, but maybe I'm missing some data. No, it is correct. So what Apple did not do yesterday, Nancy and Raul, is negate its, um, is negate its buy the D point pattern out there. It has not taken out that hammer candle from the trading session of September 16th. So, Nancy, that's a first positive that says there is a possibility. So price is testing that swing point. It's testing the high of that swing point. The high of that swing point for Apple is 151.35. The volume on that bar was 162 million shares. Today so far in the first couple hours and 15 minutes worth of trading is 37 million. So if we take 37, basically we're at uh, 105 to 115 or so million shares versus 162 million shares. If price closes above 151.35, then the answer to your question, Nancy, is yes, there's a chance. The reason there's a chance is because we would have that test and rejection of that key swing point, and Apple still has its buy the D point pattern. Your question is where could price take us to? Well, I would use the oscillator and change line as my first price target. And that's around 155 and change. It's going to change as price goes up and down. So I use 155, 156. If price get above that, then the real resistance level, and it's been tested twice now, yesterday and the day before, is 157.90. That is where I would be looking to jettison the position. So, yes, uh, it does appear that Apple could bounce out there. I like the chart here for Apple. As we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, what's missing here is some type of bottoming pattern out there. Perhaps this will get to a TD9 count bottom. It's in bar number seven right now. You still have to take out the lows of the day in order for that to happen. So that's something that you could look for is a TD9 count bottom. And then, of course, you want to see price uh, that is still above that swing point high out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, with regard to Apple. Rahul's question was to also just take a look at Apple out there, and I don't really have anything else to add to the analysis there. So Rahul and Nancy, I hope that helps you out. Rahul wanted a threefer, and that was Netflix is his second request out here. So let's get those screens populated on our screen. Those screens populated on our screen. Yep, Stevie is, uh, Stevie is uh, about to teach English class, grammar for sure, and that'll, uh, that'll screw up a couple of kids. So let's take a look at Netflix. Now, to take a look at Netflix on a daily basis out here, Rahul, there is a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. That took place yesterday. But the signal, really, that the uh, charts are giving to you and I is more neutral. Neutral because price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. As long as Netflix holds 237.96, approximately there, then the signal is neutral, but the, the, you got resistance certainly at the 246.76 level. If price closed below 237.96, then the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, it also has a TD9 count top, is suggesting to you and I that Netflix should go target the 226.48 to 229.01 area. Or get back to its swing point low that's out here. That's back from September the uh, 6th. That's what I see when I take a look at the charts for Netflix. Let's go take a look at Amazon, A-M-Z-N. That'll clear out the request here from Rahul. And so uh, Amazon, as this populates, this is telling us what? You lost the video feed. Wow. Um, Mr. Bill, I'll go back and take a look at Apple chart. Maybe you spotted something that I overlooked. Uh, and if so, I'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll get that to resolved out here. Amazon, bar number eight is going to uh, form uh, uh, today. So this could be forming a TD9 count bottom. That would form between today and Monday out there. If we get that pattern, which is likely tomorrow's bar has to close below 124.66 in order to generate bar number nine. Then what we think is that price should move up towards the 125.08 area. That's the bottom of the current profile and approximately where the daily oscillator and change line is at. 
So that's what I see when I take a look at Amazon. Let me go back to the Apple charts here and then uh, read the question uh, or comment that uh, Mr. Bill put in there. Uh, here is my wingman. He says, Steve, not taking out the hammer with the bullish engulfing on the daily Apple. Well, the hammer, yeah, so it has not taken out the, the hammer candle. That's the swing point low. So the, the bar from September 16th is the swing low on Apple. That was the, confirm, the confirmation of a buy the D point pattern. It was more than a one to one A to B equals CD. Yes, it was secondly confirmed by the bullish engulfing candle. So support for a bullish engulfing candle, Mr. Bill, is the low of the candles that it's engulfs, which in this case here is also the low of that hammer candle. So right now we're just looking at the test and rejection of that hammer candle low, because that's the swing point. And Nancy, what I said is Apple then should bounce up to the 155, 66-ish type area, maybe 157, 90. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, last question that we've got here is uh, from the Tiger's Den. It's coming from RY. Uh, so there's maybe one more question. Oh, Hector's got, uh, boy, these questions have come in late. Uh, so my apology uh, both to uh, Hector and uh, somebody named Ninja. Uh, try to get those in a bit earlier uh, for me, so uh, and I'll see if I can get to it. But the question right now inside the Tigers in from RY is, Steve, do we have a Three River Morning Star forming on the queues on a 30-minute basis? Well, we'll know for sure in six minutes out there, but the answer to your question appears to be yes. Now, what the queues need to do for a 30-minute time frame is they need to close halfway into the body of the candle from 11 o'clock in the morning. 
And uh, where's the halfway mark? Uh, you know, I'm visually looking at it. It looks like around 280, 29 or so, or 280, 48. Um, so if we get that, you then have a confirmed Three River Morning Star. Now, just because you have a bullish candle does not mean it's a bottom. What you happen to have here with the Qs is a Rhodes Mentum Indicator signal. So that would then suggest a bounce. Now, what I like to do is, opposed to use the patterns on the Qs, which only trade for six and a half hours, is really go take a look at what's going on inside the equity future contract. So what we're going to do out here, Rye, is go take a look at that and see what signals it has. So here we've got the uh, NQs. We're going to put up the 30-minute time frame chart. And voila, at this stage here, it looks like it's definitely going to form a Three River Morning Star. Now, what price is dealing with here is going to be resistance, or the first resistance level on a 30-minute time frame. This is for the NQ, not the QQQ series ETF. It's going to be at about 11,595, we'll call it. It's 11,594 and change, 11,595. Maybe 11,596, just to be a little bit more conservative. If price can close above 11,596, this is in the NQ. This is on the 30 minute. It doesn't have to be by noon. It just has to be a 30 minute bar. Then that's telling you that there's more rally to come. That more rally to come on a 30 minute time frame, unless a new profile forms, we'll get to use the existing profile, should then take us to the 11,696.50 or 11,736.30 or finally 11,752. But the answer to your question is, it does appear you're going to get a Three River Morning Star, but we won't have full confirmation of that for another about three minutes or so. Folks, have a terrific Thursday. Join me tomorrow at 8 o'clock. We'll record the show between 8 and 9. Have a terrific Thursday. Hopefully, we'll see you then. Take care.